This week's parsha is Parsha Shemini. And, of course, we are familiar with the story of Nodav Aviyu and how they bring in a Zora on the Mizbeach, and as a result, they perish. Uh, and, of course, Aaron's response, Vaidam Aaron, um, and uh, pretty much the day continued, despite the horrific tragedy. Chazal says something really amazing. Uh, Rashi brings it uh, back in, in Shemos, that really Nadav Aviyu should have passed away earlier. Nadav Aviyu should have passed away right when Moshe Bena went up the mountain by Har Sinai. When the Torah speaks about the Atzile Bnei Yisrael, the leaders of the Jewish people, Kesh Baruch did not uh, smite them and uh, impact them at that particular time. Rashi says, because the truth of the matter is, uh, this, the elders, uh, together with uh, Nadav Aviyu, they were part of a group that looked inappropriately at the holy, at the holy mountain. They looked at, uh, at a place and they saw what they should not have seen. Exactly what they saw, obviously, we can't fathom, but they, they were warned about not looking and not about, uh, and about not staring at uh, a place where they shouldn't have looked. And they looked, and despite the fact that they looked, and technically, as Rashi says, at that point, they were really um, guilty of Misa at that point. There was uh, that severe punishment. HaGosh Baruch did not punish them then. So, and Rashi says this brought in other Midrash from different places. The Gosh Baruch says, I can't interfere with the Simcha of Torah. I'm, I'm about to give the Jewish people the Torah. This is a special moment in time. I can't in any way diminish from that level of joy. And therefore, uh, he waited for the Zikhanim, he waited by the Mesainim, later on in the Midbar. Uh, and Nadav Aviyu, he took right now, at this particular juncture, uh, by the Chanukah Sabayis. When you stop and you think about this Rashi, uh, it really has an incredible message here in terms of the Hashivas, the importance of learning Torah. And maybe now especially where uh, the truth of the matter is, I don't think typically uh, Klai Shul's has ever had the amount, amount of time, uh, certainly not in the many, many years, have we had the time on a daily basis to learn Torah, to appreciate Torah. And to uh, to take advantage of the time to immerse oneself in Torah. And the, the, what Rashi is saying is that there is a unique aspect of learning Torah that requires simcha. I can't in any way infringe on the joy of Torah, and therefore I'm going to wait. Wait for what? Wait for the Chanukah Sabayis? Wait for arguably the most important moment in Jewish history, one can argue that uh, having the Shekhinah come down to Klai Yisrael, having an awareness and recognition that they were forgiven for the Chet Egel, having uh, the, uh, the, the vehicle by which we can achieve closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this was an incredible moment, equal to med- the Medrashim say, equal to the entire creation of the world. So uh, th- this is a day that so you want to wait for another day where you don't want to sort of rain on the parade. This is the day you choose not to rain on the parade? I mean, this is, uh, can there be a more important day than the Chanukah HaMishkan? And apparently, uh, it's not about maybe important, but it's about a certain relationship we have to have with Torah. Torah needs to be with joy. Torah needs to be with a level of simcha. Torah has the brach of Aharav Nashem Olekenu, make it sweet, make it delightful. We do so much, we go so much out of our way to, to uh, create that initial involvement with a child learning Torah to be, to be a positive one. We should be relishing these days. Obviously, there's a tremendous challenge that we have in terms of the the overall pressures and the the, the solitude and just the, the the concern of the virus and spreading and do I have it? Do I don't have it? And people we know and of course there's so much, so much, obviously that we're dealing with. Um, but just to simply stop and reflect, but have an opportunity to learn Torah. So much more time in the day. Not everyone, but so many, many, many people have so much more time in the day, and I think many people are taking advantage. Uh, everyone is saying, you look at these uh, Torah sites, and they're all saying, because of the uh, unusual activity, Baruch Hashem, we're capitalizing. 
we have to relish the moment. We have to have it with a sense of simcha. We have to understand that there is no other mitzvah in the entire Torah that has this vaharivna as part of its bracha because it's something unique. Our relationship with Torah, Lulei Torah is a source of such um, such a sense of serenity, such a sense of inner peace and inner joy. That's what Torah does for a Jew. And therefore, if we're looking for something to sort of hang on to during these challenging times, to, for us to be able to rejoice in the ability to learn Torah, for us to understand that this is the greatest gift alone, the gift of Torah is the greatest gift. There is nothing that could in any way infringe on the relationship that we have with Torah. That's why another view could not be taken by Matan Torah, but Hashem, we will even further enhance our, our love of Torah, our appreciation for Torah. There's no greater schus than the schus of Torah, Bez Hashem, and that schus will be zocha, only to Yeshua, to the Chamois, Nisan, Vlois, and Bez Hashem, Vyasa Meshach, Meheri, Amenu.